hello wherever wherever how are you how are you doing hope you are doing well if so doxology <laughs> what is doxology hello welcome back to my channel my name is abby if you're just joining me for the first time thank you for stopping by and i hope you subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down below when you do please do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever there's a video up on this channel and there will be new videos every week now if you're a family member already if you're a subscriber thank you very much for coming back <laughs> how are you doing and i hope you're doing very well so today is the third and final part of my growing up in nigeria series if you have seen the part one and part two thank you so very much for the love and the support guys if you haven't please do what are you waiting for kindly watch part one and two that way you understand the series so today guys i'm going to be focusing on our experiences in primary school and in secondary school and i'm also going to be making some references to what we thought were cool trends for us then back in the 90s as you can tell i absolutely loved growing up in the 90s I, talking about the 90s just makes me smile makes me extremely joyful because it reminds me a lot about my childhood days right so anyways guys the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to school for us then in the 90s was this popular book that we used in primary school, Brighter Grammar. Everybody, I, I even think every school in Nigeria <laughs> used Brighter Grammar. Everybody had Brighter Grammar. Brighter Grammar was extremely popular at the time and there were also this Macmillan series that we read back then in primary school where you had Ali and Simbi and all of that stuff <laughs> now moving on to secondary school guys I am sure that nobody nobody that grew up in the 90s can ever forget new general mathematics I hated new general mathematics and that was simply because I was not and I'm still not a fan of mathematics at all there was new general mathematics one up until six because then in Nigeria we had primary one all the way up to primary six there were also some classic textbooks that we used that in secondary school if you a chemistry student like I was who remembers Ababio. You, if you want to pass chemistry, you had to read Ababio. It was almost as though if we don't have Ababio, or if we don't read Ababio, you will not pass chemistry. <laughs> so everybody had Ababio. There was also this um, Ugo Si Ugo book series. They had so many textbooks of so many subjects. Ugo Si Ugo was everywhere. Then for some of us who did English literature in secondary school, especially in our junior secondary, you had to have these books. There was Time Changes Yesterday. There was The Drummer Boy. <laughs> there was Lion and the Jewel. There was Shakespeare. And there was She Stoops to Conquer. Now, talking about secondary school, guys, who remembers the ton of common entrance exams we had to do just to get in secondary school? See, I'm not exaggerating, but I think I wrote up to 10 different entrance exams at the time. There was a national common entrance examination, and then there was, I, there was for command secondary schools, there was for Navy secondary schools, there was for Air Force secondary schools, there was for state government schools. The, oh, there were so many, and then it was almost, it was like a circus. Every exam I went for, I always had new set of um, stationery to go with speaking of stationery guys who remembers big biro who remembers reynolds biro and uh, we also had eligaza biro as well <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 
Reynolds and Big were my personal favorite to write with then. If you're watching me and you owned a mat set, raise up your hand. I'm sure everybody will raise up their hand because it was compulsory, right? To have a mat set for use during your mathematics class. Everybody had a mat set right from GSS1 all the way up to SS3. It was a requirement. It was a necessity for us back then in secondary school. In the 90s, there was this unprecedented popularity of the federal government colleges then it was like a competition i i attended a federal government girls college i'm not going to mention which some of you might know <laughs> i attended a federal government girls college back then and um, my brother actually also um, attended a federal government college and it, then it was it was a big deal it was bragging rights you know for us to say i attended a federal government girls college this or i attended a federal government college da 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 it was such a big deal back in the 90s when you were in ss3 did you have a slum book you had to have a slum book now come on you had to have a slum book for your mates in school to fill up and sign and all of that and slow books were so secretive <laughs> and you'd get people filling in with their crushes with their interests say one thing about me what do you like about me ah <sighs> now when we were in ss3 as well there was a rite of passage that we had to perform and that was our last day of school where we had to sign on our shirts guys if we didn't do that sorry but that was so much fun and you would wear those shirts from school all the way home so that everyone that sees you on your street knows that ah man i finished secondary school i'm a big girl i'm a big boy you know <laughs> i'm sure you guys have heard about lady koi koi right if you did not know about lady koi koi and you went to secondary school in the 90s you were in boarding school and you didn't know about Lady Koi Koi. <sighs> really? Lady Koi Koi was an assumed spirit that was in every secondary school in Nigeria. How that was possible, I don't know. It was a story that was sold to us and we ran with it. It was about a lady... I can't even remember the story of what happened to her but a spirit was always in every secondary school and sometimes in the middle of the night you hear the sound koi 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 <laughs> the lady koi koi phenomenon was actually one of the things that made secondary school interesting for us at the time because there will be so many incidents that will happen and everybody just start saying oh lady koi koi is lady koi koi and back to us being boarders because i was a boarder when i was in um federal government girls college from gss1 up until gss3 you had to take provisions to school for you to survive the school will definitely feed you but you had to have some sort of backup that was brought from home and if you were in the business of taking provisions to school i'm sure you all remember cabin biscuits right <laughs> what is secondary school boarding house without cabin biscuits come on tell me you know secondary school guys if you had a boyfriend or girlfriend in secondary school <laughs> i'm sure you used to write love letters or you used to receive love letters and i don't know how it became a staple for us to start with hello wherever wherever how are you how are you doing hope you are doing well if so doxology <laughs> what is doxology i don't know how we started <laughs> it was something we just knew and it was something we carried on doing it's funny now because if some of you still have those letters please go and check and come back and testify in the comment section please if so doxology <laughs> but romance in secondary school was so cute because 
you get to write out lyrics of current um, R&B songs, love songs at the time. If your girlfriend wasn't in your secondary school and you didn't have lever to go to a house to go say hi to her, obviously because of parents, you would have to find somebody that lives on your streets that has access to the house. I give the person the letter to her. Or if you were lucky, there was someone in your school that was living in a house or there was a friend, you would send the person through, you would send the letter through the person. You, relationships in secondary school were cute. I mean, of course, we didn't know whatever it is we were doing there, but they were cute, right? Now, there are some trends that we considered as cool in the 90s when we were growing up <laughs> one of which was bandanas for guys you either had to tie it as a scarf or you had to have it in your pocket or you tied it around your wrist it was for some reason considered a swag back then and um, the same goes for Timberland boots as well for a guy then owning a pair of Timberland boots was like your announcement into your big boys <laughs> if you didn't have Timberland boots then please sit down <laughs> and not forgetting baggy jeans for guys as well you had to have baggy jeans now it was part of the swag if you didn't have baggy jeans please you're not a big boy i don't know if you remember the wrangler store then in lagos you had to own at least a pair of jeans from wrangler store in the same vein you also had to have at least one top from collectibles who remembers collectibles in lagos collectibles was a fashion boutique then in lagos and it was popping for the time it was popping it was very popular you had to have at least one top if you could not afford one top from collectibles you all save all your lunch money or your pocket money or get one of your rich aunties to give you money to go get a top from collectibles because there was that end of year party that was coming there was that birthday party that was coming and you wanted to be one of the girls who was wearing collectibles because you were a big girl isn't it <laughs> and there was also mtv as well if you had access to cable tv at the time you would watch mtv then come to school and just us that didn't have cable tv about what was going on in pop culture at the time good times man good times as you can tell i loved 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 growing up in the 90s in nigeria there are so many things about growing up in the 90s that brings back fond precious memories and i'm sure some of you feel that way as well like i said this is the third and final part of my growing up in nigeria series if you've seen part one and you've seen part two and you've enjoyed it as much as i have please kindly share my videos and let's all feel nostalgic about the 90s together if you haven't please take time to watch the part one and part two which will be linked in the description bar below if you have watched this video up to this point and you haven't subscribed to my channel please <laughs> please kindly subscribe to my channel there'll be new videos every week thank you very much guys i had fun doing this i had fun with this series and i had so much fun talking about growing up in the 90s thank you again and i'll see you in my next video Bye bye